Hey guys, thank you for coming out here. This is the third part of what you need to know about food labeling. In this episode, I'm going to focus on another controversial topic, low calorie sweeteners. And before we get started, my general disclaimer is that all the information in this video is for entertainment and education purposes only. You should always talk with your healthcare provider about your unique situation. So the big question is, how do these sweeteners work in our body? Let's find out. The FDA has approved five artificial sweeteners. And most of these I can't pronounce, so here they are. And the FDA has identified all of these as safe. For each of these, the sweetener should be clearly identified on the food label. These sweeteners are supposed to help with diabetes. The thing is, research suggests this may not be the case. These sweeteners may cause weight gain in diabetes. So is that true? What do we really know? Well, let's take a look. And as always, the links to the studies will be in the video description below. So one study says they cause weight gain in diabetes and another says they don't. If you take the five of these low calorie sweeteners as a group, each one has a different chemical makeup. So one thought is that these differences may explain the inconsistent results. One scientist found that saccharin and sucralose stimulate the release of insulin in the body. Acesulfine don't seem to do this. Why is this important and how does it relate to diabetes, right? Because I was taught part of diabetes was too much sugar in the bloodstream and the lack of insulin production was a big piece of the problem. So releasing insulin seems like a good thing. Well, what actually happens when you consume sucralose and saccharin? The brain thinks you consumed sugar and it tells the pancreas to start producing insulin to remove the sugar from the bloodstream. Our body interprets these sweeteners as 600 times sweeter than sugar. Insulin gets shot into the bloodstream and starts removing sugar, but the additional sugar never comes. So then you feel that hypoglycemic sugar crash and you have to go eat more food to rebalance your sugar or glucose levels. Who knew, right? The problem is the additional sugar never shows up. So you can start to understand why you would gain more weight. Now, here's the weird part. Studies show these sweeteners have you gaining more weight than those who don't use these sweeteners, even though you may be eating less food. And males gain more weight than females, two and a half times more weight than females. Whoa. But what else is going on? Let's look into some of the puzzling changes to the pancreas and the liver. The pancreas is the organ that produces and releases insulin into the system. It sits right below your stomach. And remember how saccharin and sucralose encourage the body to release more insulin? And I guess aspartame does the same thing. So because these sweeteners trick the body into thinking they're eating a lot of sugar, the body thinks it has to release a lot of insulin. So it's like you're running around on a perpetual insulin high. It would be a lot like hypoglycemia. You could experience confusion, shakiness, lightheadedness, hunger, and more. You know, the energy the brain uses is sugar. It uses a lot of sugar. So about 2% of your body weight is the brain, but the brain consumes 20% of the sugar you intake. Drinking low calorie beverages can have your body continually pulling too much sugar out of the bloodstream and starving your brain. The liver has changed too, and if you do your annual blood work, one of the tests is a liver enzyme test. Now this test helps monitor your liver health, and sometimes the medications you're on require you to get a liver enzyme test every few months because they can cause liver damage. So there's three different enzymes on this test. One of the enzymes is called AST. So the research found those consuming these low calorie sweeteners, this enzyme tested high. 
but the other two enzymes were normal. So when AAST tests high and the other ones look normal, this usually means that you either have Wilson's disease, hepatitis, or excessive muscle breakdown. So Wilson's disease is a genetic disorder that causes a buildup of copper in the body. So just an FYI, too much copper in the body leads to brain disorders like psychosis. And you know what hepatitis is. It's inflammation of the liver. And one of the ways you can get hepatitis is through toxins. The last one, the rapid muscle breakdown can damage the kidneys. And one of the symptoms that you might get with this is dark red or brown urine. And if you do, talk to your doctor. There was one more change in the liver. The cells had these little bubbles filled with fluid. And you can probably imagine that's not a good thing. This is associated with cell death. So what's happening there? These little grains can move in and out of the cell, but sometimes things happen and they get stuck in the cell. And when too many get stuck in the cell, the cell will start pulling in water, causing these little water bubbles. So sometimes this is reversible, but, you know, I imagine that would mean you would have to stop drinking these sweeteners and detox your body. Because here's the other thing. These sweeteners, they don't break down in your body or the environment. They are generally too different from sugar for your body to break them down. That's how they provide sweetness without added calories. You want to hear something else weird? Your blood sugar levels were higher with low calorie sweeteners compared to just consuming sugar. And you've already seen that the brain kicks off a big insulin spike that pulls too much sugar out of your blood when you consume these low calorie sweeteners. Well, the body also has these uh, mechanisms that force it back into balance. So when blood sugar levels are too low in the blood, the body starts releasing stored sugar back into the bloodstream. And I imagine since too much sugar was removed, too much is going to be put back. The body is a little bit like turning the Titanic. It takes a little time for the body. And these changes are just happening too quickly. Now, aspartame isn't in the clear. Aspartame, like saccharin and sucralose, creates similar problems with blood sugar levels, but they don't think it causes weight gain. All this information means that people consuming low-calorie sweeteners ended up being almost two times more likely to be obese and overweight, and their body mass indices were higher. The whole thing about how these sweeteners affect our metabolism and weight, I found super fascinating. But that's not the only thing they have found with these sweeteners. And you're probably thinking, well, that's enough. And I would agree with you. But it turns out you're more likely to suffer a stroke using these sweeteners. And the more you consume, the higher your risk. On these sweeteners, you're two and a half to three times more likely to have a stroke. And one study found the risk for stroke from low calorie sweeteners was increased only if you were obese. Another study found the more beverages you drank, like one or more a day, could increase your chances of a stroke by four times. And the other thing that's a real bother as we get older is dementia and Alzheimer's. Well, you don't get relief from those either with these low calorie sweeteners. Compared to drinking regular sugar soft drinks, your risk for Alzheimer's increases to about four times that of drinking just regular soda. Now, dementia saw something like two times an increase in chances of getting dementia, and they haven't been able to figure out why low-calorie sweeteners increase the risk of stroke or dementia. What is clear is the type of stroke most commonly experienced by those using these low-calorie sweeteners is called an ischemic stroke, and that's a stroke that blocks the small arteries in the brain. Now, every one of these has a possible relation to cancer. Sucralose, it's leukemia and other blood cancers. Saccharin is bladder cancer. Aspartame is leukemia and lymphoma. Acesulfame is liver and lung cancer. Neotame is with tumors and brain damage. But here's the deal on this. You would have to consume a lot on any one of these. And I think with aspartame, it's about 
800 sodas a day. With acesulfine, it's about two gallons. So the evidence regarding the negative health effects of low calorie sweeteners, they say it's not definite, but it is growing. And here's the thing. If you've been watching this whole series on food labeling, you probably realize that one drop of rain isn't significant. But one drop of rain in a rainstorm and over time created the Grand Canyon. Okay, so what did we cover here? The relationship between low calorie sweeteners and diabetes, weight gain, and high blood sugar levels. How low calorie sweeteners may increase your risk of stroke, Alzheimer's, and dementia. And the possible link between these sweeteners and cancers. Okay, guys. Until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.